Not as good as last week. <laughs> but when the bar's that high, who cares? This is the second episode of House of the Dragon now that uh, I've had the chance to watch Monday, 24th of June. And I'm not going to do a big scoring full review. I just, just want to give you some thoughts of what I had on the episode. It didn't have a big Holy Christ moment the way that the first episode did. This episode is very much denouement, denouement, denouement. It's like the fallout of what happens for that. And it is so interesting as a result of that. Because you've got on one side Queen Rhaenyra, who obviously wasn't involved with that horrible beheading that we saw last week, but is now immediately in a position of of retreat because no one's going to believe her after the propaganda that Queen Alicent and King Aegon have done on their side. And it, it's, it, it's Game of Thrones, isn't it? It's everyone moving pieces in an interesting way. It's, it's Queen Helena's fallout of losing her son. I mean, still, even though it wasn't shown the way that, you know, the Viper in the Mountain was in season five of Game of Thrones, it wasn't shown in that gory detail. The mind's eye filled in enough blanks. I'm still in shock after that first episode. And we've got a mother in mourning. We've got King Aegon, the father of the boy who lost his head, <laughs> Jaceris, who is, he, he's gone full anger in this one. Like, you, you hand him a dragon and he'd go scorched earth on Westeros. And all the while, you've got bloody Otto Hightower, the master manipulator, moving the pieces around and using Jaceris' death as a means to secure more power. And he went too far in this episode. He went far too far in this episode to the degree that he, well, not he, but he pushed Aegon into making what I think for Aegon in the long term is going to be a huge mistake. As much as Otto Hightower is a despicable character who would sell his own mother for a bloody camel if he could, if it meant securing more power for himself and his family and his lineage and his position as Hand of the King... He went too far here. He didn't listen to his grandson's emotions. And as a result, Aegon got pushed to making the mistake of removing Otto as his hand. That is going to cost Aegon in the long run. No doubt about that. The, yeah. I'll tell you who played a really, really clever hand in this. I can't remember his name for the life of me. But, but the, the, the cripple character. He played a blinder. Because... He gave King Aegon what no one else would, which is the person who beheaded his son. Gave him to him in a prison cell on a plate. He got the information he needed from him first. You can be assured that that's going to come back to play a part. And then he let the king grab a big old mace and smash his head in, which is, listen, as a father, believe me, I would do something similar if someone beheaded my children. Like... There wouldn't be a prison cell strong enough to stop me hurting the person who would damage or inflict pain or indeed behead my children. It just, no, I can, I'm Team Aegon on this one. I can't believe I'm saying it. I'm with the crazy king because I get where he's coming from. As a dad, I get where he's coming from. Um, I think as a human being, forget the fact that I'm a dad. As a human being, I get where he's coming from. And yeah, I think... <laughs> for lack of a better word, Cripple Boy played a really smart move in this one. And I think you're going to see him as the hand in not too long. Maybe next episode, we shall see. But th those are some thoughts, some theories, some feedback I have on Season 2, Episode 2 of House of the Dragon. Very, very much a putting pieces on the chessboard episode. Not a bad thing. And it was highly entertaining and do you know what the one the, 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 yeah there's two things i'll i'll throw a bit of shade at the twin trope it was a bit cartoony the whole but which one is sir eric the plan works but unfortunately it's a trope that's been done to death in cartoons and in comedy and in various other forms of media didn't entirely work for me and I thought the ending was quite abrupt. Alison, slappity slap, sir. Sir Cole. And then angry sex and end. I'm like, huh? 
I mean, I get it, but also a bit, yeah, bit abrupt. This series is held in such high regard by me that anything not perfect instantly sticks out. And that's in, in its own way. It's a backhandy compliment, but it's still a compliment. I think this is an amazing show. It's the best thing on TV at the moment, in my opinion. I can't wait to see what's coming next week bring it on bring it on what did you guys think leave your thoughts in your comments down below are you excited for the episode next week there's a subscribe button there another video for you to watch there so please go ahead and do all that and come with me on this house of the dragon season two journey each and every week and i'll see you guys next week or before that if you want to watch other videos inside out 2 should be out tomorrow so do check that out and i'll see you guys on the next video thank you for watching as always bye for now